let's look at some specific causes that factors that contribute to violence and and a sense of hopelessness in Aboriginal communities. I think there's three of them. Lack of education, lack of work and family breakdown. What could we do today to reduce these factors? Well, there's a number of things that can be done. I know that, you know, we have to look at remote communities uh, with some real with some real honesty. We have we should be looking at, well, there are some that are just being held up on life support that don't have the services uh, available to those vulnerable people in those communities to give them a really uh, a quality of life, uh, better quality of life. So should some remote communities in fact continue to be kept on life support? Um, other than that, we should be providing real opportunity for traditional owners in their country. The Land Rights Act as it stands uh, has diminished the opportunity for traditional owners to take full control of their land to create businesses, which creates jobs, which creates a meaningful uh, journey through life, which gives people purpose, because we know that when adults have jobs, kids go to school, you have better functioning households, less violence, and no more dependency on welfare. And these are the things that haven't been allowed to happen in remote communities because of this idea that, you know, they live a socialist way of life. You know, it's communism in our own backyard. Well, and, uh, you know, and, and this current Labor government doesn't want to even open its eyes to it. You might have been referring to communism when you coined this very clever phrase in your speech, opportunistic Indigenous community politics. Can you explain what you meant by that phrase? So it's almost like, you know, I've heard this over again amongst other Indigenous Australians. It's, it's almost like some uh, communities are run by mafias. You know, you have heads of families uh, sometimes there are some heads of families who have been perpetrators of violence themselves, uh, who basically attract all the resources uh, and bully everybody else. And it's like dictatorships on some communities. So it, it's been sort of the, the Land Rights Act has been constructed in a, in a way that it's majority rules. So mob rule, basically in some of these places. These aren't necessarily elected people. These are representatives of families. But over time, we've seen there's been nepotism and corruption uh, that's gone on in communities, which has only sought to empower, um, you know, the the bullies of these communities. And it's, it's happened over and over again, this expectation that everyone's supposed to share everything in our communities. And yes, there's an element that's wonderful about our culture that we take care of family but it also lends itself to allowing for uh, members of family who are, who are drug addicts, who are uh, alcoholics and gamblers to then demand access to everything you have, your income. And if you're a vulnerable person, elder, elderly person, uh, those family members can come and strip you of your uh, welfare payments, which is now gonna happen because of the removal of the cashless debit card and leave you with nothing basically. And it's the same with the royalty system. The royalties comes along. It's those head honchos that get most of the money, leaving everybody else uh, to fend for themselves. And the system is absolutely and utterly broken. Uh, but this government doesn't want to look at that to improve things.